Welcome to another episode of Hack Naked TV, recorded December 10th, 2015. I'm Aaron Lyons, and today I'm going to be talking about the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act, Kazakhstan, flash updates, backdoors to encryption, and cyber espionage. As always, this episode is brought to you by Cybery. Get the latest hacking and security training from Cybery.it. Visit hacknaked.tv forward slash Cybery for a referral link from our listeners. And brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. The leaders in pen testing and active defense. Email consulting at Black Hills Infosec to request a quote today. So the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act of 2015 was just recently passed by Congress. And this act gives companies uh, some liability protection when they share information about recent attacks and breaches that they've experienced. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, is going to be playing the lead role in collecting this information and disseminating it back out. It's a little suspect to me, but we're going to give the government the benefit of the doubt here and that this program is actually going to move information sharing forward. Now, to be covered by the liability, liability protection, the companies are going to have to meet some forthcoming definitions of cyber threat indicator and defensive measures when they share information. So the information that they share has to meet th these definitions. And the key challenge that companies are going to face is separating the information that meets those key definitions from PII and their, pr and then their private internal data. Uh, hopefully, this program does go forward and promote the sharing of uh, information between companies and helps, you know, provide some real, use a, you know, keyword threat intelligence uh, for for companies. This is going to also combine two additional acts that were passed earlier this year in April: the Protecting Cybersecurity Networks Act and the National Cybersecurity Protection Advancement Act. So all three of these acts will be combined into the one uh, Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act. We'll see how this turns out. I think it's a step in the right direction overall. Kazakhstan is taking a book out of China's Great Firewall. And in this January, they're going to basically break all web encryption. Uh, they're touting this as a move to secure the protection of Kazakhstan users who have access to content from foreign internet resources. Uh, really, this is just exposing all of Kazakhstan's users' uh, communications to snooping. And given the type of government that Kazakhstan has, we can pretty safely assume that this is just part of their greater censorship apparatus. Um, sounds a lot like what um, some of our uh, backdoor talks uh, from our own agencies are talking about. Uh, speaking of, the FBI director, Comey, still wants a backdoor to encryption. He just recently said this is not a technical issue, it's a business model question. And he says that there's plenty of companies out there that allow access to their users' uh, data and communications and even smartphones. And just, you know, noting that s certain companies allow FBI access to their data um, doesn't make it a business model question. Just because some companies are willing to provide less security to their users while others don't doesn't suddenly make, you know, putting a backdoor encryption, encryption feasible or right. Um, and really, it basically... Uh, gives two options. Either you allow the government access to encrypted data through a technical means that just compromises it overall, or not offering your customers robust encryption in the first place. Um, and really, this misses a sizable portion of the encryption that's out there that is not in the US. I mean, it, it's open source, or is actually crafted by uh, companies outside the US. Um, so, you know, this anti, this backdoor anti-encryption rhetoric that we continue to hear from government agencies in the US just is inane 
and <sighs> continues. Uh, I don't know when it's going to stop, and hopefully, you know, companies, you know, Apple and Google and other large tech companies continue to, you know, push back against uh, the U.S. government in wanting this. On a more positive note, maybe, Flash just, Adobe just issued a huge update to Flash, uh, patching 78 uh, CVE uh, classified security vulnerabilities. Um, I mean, it's just probably the biggest patch to Flash to date. A um, couple of things here, you know, it's Flash. Why are we still using it? HTML5 can do everything that Flash can. Um, if there's any way you can stop using Flash, stop using it. Uh, malvertising in the past year has just skyrocketed through uh, you know, Flash-based uh, malware in ads. Um, it's time for it to die. Even Adobe has taken a step away from it, moving from uh, their Adobe Flash to Adobe what is it, Animation now, which is more HTML, which is HTML5 based versus Flash based. So, you know, I think it's going to take a while for Flash to, to die its slow death, but it's going to happen. So, in, in interesting news, there's been another case of corporate cyber espionage here in the U.S. This is, takes place between two small linen companies in uh, New Hampshire and Massachusetts. So, the New Hampshire-based company... And what makes this even more confusing is that they have very, very similar names. Um, so this will make it even more confusing. So the New Hampshire-based company, their IT director, sometime in September 2009, accessed the computer uh, server of its competitor. He then shared the login information for the competitor's uh, system with other people at the company. They proceeded to access the competitor's system 157 times, the majority of those originating from their offices. So they didn't have the, even the decency to try to cover their tracks. Um, from, those, from those 157 accesses, ac times they accessed their competitor, they downloaded approximately 1,100 of their competitors' invoices, and they then use those invoices in a sales campaign to target their competitors' clients. Uh, they're facing, uh, the IT director is facing a maximum sentence of five years probation and a half a million dollar fine, and he may even have to pay uh, restitution to the victim. Um, they pled guilty and were awaiting sentencing. That's it for this episode of Hack Naked TV. Remember, sales for our t-shirts and 10th anniversary sweatshirts are only available to the end of this year. You can use the code Black Friday to get 50% off on your, on your order. Hurry up. This is the last they're going to be available. And that's it. Talk to you next time.